Whisper sweet nothings into my ear. Oh, Babette, what a beautiful tax form you have. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most underrated Saturday Night Live cast members. You know, I just like to have fun. I'm not worthy of anything. I'm really not. <laughs> and a foaming French poodle can give you cascasabi. <laughs> We'll take a good long look again, because you just stepped into hell, baby! For this list, we're ranking some of the not-ready-for-primetime players that did some great work during their tenure at SNL. However, for one reason or another, they've largely flown under the radar in the public eye. Which member of the extensive SNL cast do you think is underrated? Sound off in the comments and let us know. Number 10, Jay Farrow. Blue Ivy, Hova Jr., <laughs> yep! You don't have to be great at impressions to be an SNL star, but it certainly helps. Jay Farrow just happens to be fantastic at them, and it showed during his tenure at Saturday Night Live. Michelle, it's uh, this is such a treat. I feel like uh, I feel like it's been years since I've seen you. Sure, just about every SNL fan is aware of Farrow's nearly perfect take on Barack Obama, but we'd argue that his impressions of other celebrities such as Denzel Washington were possibly even better. Oh, look at this here. This is nice. This is very nice. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you bought this? I did. Huh? This handbag right here? That's what you, 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 this is yours? Yes, it is. Pharaoh just possesses a knack for nailing down every little detail and personality quirk about his subjects. Not to mention an ease and confidence that make him tailor-made for the Saturday Night Live stage. Na, 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 na. On May 24th, Kim and I get married, fam. Number 9. Kevin Nealon Every good comedic bit needs a straight man. There were few SNL alum that were better at this often thankless task than Kevin Nealon. Feels like hair? Yeah. So hairy bodies are good? Definitely. Well, then why should I keep my shirt on? <laughs> the comedian was probably best known for his excellent stint as host of Weekend Update, where we got to witness one of his classic characters, Mr. Subliminal. I mean, Germany. <laughs> German reunification is right around the corner, big mistake. However, Neelan was also great in skits, and could be relied upon to allow a more animated co-star, such as Adam Sandler or Chris Farley, to shine by holding things together. A turkey for me, and a turkey for you. Let's eat the turkey in a big brown shoe. If Saturday Night Live was a well-oiled machine, then it was Kevin Neelan that helped keep those gears in motion as an underrated member of the cast. Hey, is that... Brenda, I hear pulling up? Hmm, probably. Let me check. <laughs> looks me. Yeah, looks like her. Number 8. Bobby Moynihan Bobby Moynihan was a member of the SNL cast for nearly 10 years, and for that we are deeply thankful. I mean, you know, kids, they need to pull up their pants, Seth. <laughs> Kids today, kids today, they're always saying, text me, text me, text me. Don't you write a letter, you dummy? Not just because of his popular roles like the recurring Weekend Update character of Drunk Uncle, but also due to his valuable balance of physical comedy and impressions. Do you understand the pressure that I'm under? I got a science project that's two weeks late, I'm five chapters behind in Taylor Two Cities, and I don't have a freaking date to the dance. Moynihan could make the audience laugh with subtle facial expressions, or get a huge reaction from some over-the-top stunt. Let's take a look at the slow-mo. He completely misjudged where that first pad was. It was almost as if there was absolutely no communication between his brain and his body. It's this versatility that made Moynihan underrated in a cast that included some pretty big names, including Andy Samberg, Bill Hader, and Kristen Wiig. Being able to stand out in that crowd is just one of the reasons why he's still remembered so fondly. Hey, Han, how do you work this friggin' thing? <laughs> Number 7. Terry Sweeney Bearing no relation to the more well-known Julia Sweeney, Terry Sweeney was only a part of the SNL cast for one season. I don't know why, but the maple fudge is selling better than ever before, and the almond fudge is even surpassing that. <laughs> However, he actually worked as a staff writer in the years prior to his 1985 promotion. Terry made history as the first openly gay male member of the cast. The trailblazing comedian displayed an outrageous sense of humor and bold creative voice. A round trip ticket to Aruba! <laughs> and $5,000 man money! Oh! This key wouldn't have to belong to that little 
little Corvette outside in front, would it? Sweeney's impressions of female celebrities like Joan Rivers were envelope pushing for the period. In a time when Saturday Night Live was struggling to connect with viewers and critics, his energetic delivery also stood out. Here's hoping that Terry Sweeney's underrated work can be rediscovered by a new generation today. Well, I just want to thank you. Uh, well, I just want to thank you, Johnny, wherever you are, for giving me my first big break. I owe it all to you, Johnny. Now eat my dust! <laughs> Number 6. Sherry O'Terry Most SNL fans best remember Sherry O'Terry from her comedy dream team pairing with Will Ferrell during the Spartan cheerleader sketches. Oh my uh, god, we are playing great chess right now! I know! <laughs> How's my hair look? It looks okay. You have some split ends, though. I'm sorry. I'm a friend. But we shouldn't limit her skill to this admittedly great character. I want you to slow it down now and tell me just what occurred. Oh, Terry could be relied upon to be incredibly creative with her comedy, from developing outside-the-box characters like Nadine and Colette Reardon to her impeccable take on television icon Barbara Walters. Oh, and let's not forget her pairing with Chris Kattan as the Zimmermans, who took the PDA acronym to a whole new level with their affectionate antics. I said go down. Wanna go down? Ooh, Maybe you, I wanna go up, huh? Baby, Maybe I down. wanna go up. I said go down. I'm gonna go back up again. No, I want you to go, go down. down. I'll go I said go down. down. I'll go back up again. I said go down, go baby. I'll go I'm back up. I'm not gonna go down. down. Number five, Jan Hooks. Remove your shirt. The lady smiles. There's a chill. Remove. The greatly missed Jan Hooks was a part of the fresh and new SNL cast for 1986, a group that included future stars Phil Hartman and Dana Carvey. While Hooks never seemed to achieve the mainstream heights of some of her castmates, she absolutely delivered the comedic goods. The comedian killed it as one half of the Sweeney Sisters, a superb parody of a lounge act from the 1970s or 80s. The 70s, the 70s. 70s. Yeah. Now that's a decade that still has us all puzzled. Not doesn't it? a clue, went Not right clue. over my yeah. head. I lost it, yeah. I don't know. She also showed off her down-to-earth warmth and charisma as Brenda the Waitress. You ready to tell me what you like? I'm ready. You look it. You got some specials that look real fine. I'm pretty proud of him. Although she may not have become as famous and well-known as other great comedians, one thing's for sure. She connected with fans and colleagues alike from around the world. Somewhere between cleanliness and godliness lies compulsion, the world's most indulgent disinfectant. Number 4. Tim Meadows We know what you might be thinking. How could someone who had an SNL tenure as long as Tim Lil Hockey Meadows be underrated? You know, I have two loves in my life. Uh, Fourth of July, and of course, teamwork. <laughs> really? And yet, and yet, on your application, you put here, teamwork is for suckers. When I'm hired, I will do to teamwork what Napoleon did to Japan. Yeah, he, he conquered Japan, right? We'd argue that the freshness of his work and how much he grew as a performer throughout his 10-season run on the show made him into an underappreciated superstar. Shirt in a can comes in four kick-ass styles. Golf shirt. Dress shirt, tank top, and super fancy tuxedo shirt. The comedian cut his teeth working improv. His ability to adapt and progress served Meadows well once he made it onto Saturday Night Live in 1991. Meadows was much more than the ladies' man character. Mmm. Yeah. These Viagras are good. Mm hmm. Tastes like chocolate. Not only did he write skits behind the scenes, but the show greatly benefited from his natural ability to develop unique celebrity impressions. Mr. Simpson, do you even know who Dr. King was? Oh, uh, sure I do. He was that black woman who kicked all those people off the bus. <laughs> Number 3. Anna Gasteyer Call this next entry a case of underrated in one medium, but not in another. Today, Anna Gasteyer is well-known, loved, and respected for her work on Broadway. But since she was on SNL before her career really took off, she remains one of the series' more underrated players. Wow, I can't wait to get my mouth around this ball. <laughs> We're thinking beyond the classic sweaty ball skit with Molly Shannon and Alec Baldwin, and more of her razor-sharp impersonations. A robin's egg splatters in a prism of harvest colors. <laughs> that felt really good. Gasteyer's takes on Martha Stewart and Celine Dion were incredibly spot on. To all my Jewish friends back home in Quebec, I would like to say Shmaya Hanukkah. And some of her original characters, such as Lilith Fair folk singer, comedian Cinder Calhoun, are both of their time and hilariously timeless. 
thanks to Anna's unique comedic voice. We practically peed our pants. We were laughing so hard. Number two, Lorraine Newman. Here's your pea soup. Maybe now we can be friends, huh? That's what right. do you say? <laughs> Suck it! There have been countless comedians who have entered the SNL cast via their work with the Groundlings Improv Group and Comedy School. This has been true from the beginning, seeing as Groundlings founding member Lorraine Newman was part of the OG Saturday Night Live cast. My boyfriend Brad and me were supposed to get married and everything, you know, so I was making a peach cobbler for his mother, and I overheard her say, look, the chicks is making us a Presbyterian pie. Despite making history in that first class of comedians, she and fellow Not Ready for Primetime player Garrett Morris were both underrated in the grand scheme of things. Lorraine's decision not to revisit many of her original characters may have hampered her reputation as a household name today. Ew, that's disgusting! However, her charisma, timing, and natural charm in those early seasons still resonate with SNL historians. And hey, she was Connie Conehead. My name is Connie, and I am 16 Earth years old. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Tim Robinson a multi-talented featured player turned writer. My favorite dinosaur is a brontosaurus. <laughs> Scientists can't tell from the fossils um, if they held their necks out upright or... <laughs> Casey Wilson for Dusty Velvet and hosting the Cougar Den. Yeah, ooh, ooh. Nassim Pedrad, for her impressions and physical comedic skill. Okay, Kim, I have to admit, um, I haven't really seen your show. What? You haven't been keeping up with it? <laughs> Ellen Cleghorn, versatile, funny, and witty as hell. Hi, y'all, it's Queen Shaniqua back from Harlem where I learned all about Kwanzaa today. Kwanzaa is a Swahili word and it means Santa don't come to my house. Horatio Sands. When he wasn't making Jimmy Fallon laugh, he was making us chuckle. Choo -choo. <laughs> Why did I give him that whip for his birthday? I always treat the customers with... <laughs> Makes no sense, really. <laughs> Chris Catan, Mango, Goth Talk, and Roxbury. Oh my. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Will Forte. You're getting shut down that nobody wants to work with a crybaby fart face. You're out of business. Speaking of the groundlings, our number one pick also spent time honing his craft at this prestigious comedy school. He then made his way to SNL for an eight year tour of duty. To be fair, Forte's first artistic love seems to have always been writing. <laughs> I have these nightmares. <laughs> this is how I got dressed in and then they gotta go into work. He has a seriously impressive resume of behind-the-scenes credits. However, his work on the SNL stage remains underrated for those with an open mind to creative comedy. The way Forte paired up with Jason Sudeikis as the reverse hair metal icon's John Bovey was genius. Oh, dying on a prayer. Give my foot, we will not make it, I do not swear. Oh, dying on a prayer. He also gave us the boneheaded but beloved MacGyver knockoff MacGruber. Fans could always rely on something unique and outside the box when it came to a Will Forte performance. It's okay, MacGruber. forget it. I don't care what you think anyway, okay? And I'm very good at my job. You really think I'm not good at my job? MacGruber! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.